Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up a super fast, super accurate, low level N64 emulator inside of RetroArch, and this is known as Parallel. Now, a lot of you might have already heard of this core, but it has been totally rewritten. They actually did away with it for a little while. All the good changes from Parallel were transferred over to Moopin64 Plus next. But this is a totally rewritten low-level N64 RDP emulator core, and it is absolutely amazing. So this works with the OpenGL backend and the Vulkan backend. Obviously, you're going to need RetroArch for this, but I'm going to go over the whole setup process, and I recommend definitely checking this out. Now, if you're happy with the performance and the upscaling of Moopin64 Plus Next, that's totally fine. I personally really love that emulator, but if you're looking for a more accurate N64 emulator, definitely give this a try. Now in this video, I'm going to go over setting this up with RetroArch, and I'm also going to leave some links to the Libretro website here so you can check out all of the information on this. It's available for Linux, Windows, and Android right now. Within this article, they've also run some benchmarks, and they also have a few YouTube videos showing off some performance with this new RDP core running on Windows with a pretty beefy system. But I've tested this on some lower-end hardware, and it seems to work really well to get fast and accurate N64 emulation on your PC. So if you're ready to get this up and running, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to need is RetroArch. Link for the download will be in the description. I'm on a Windows 10 PC. So I'm going to head down here, and I'm going to download the 64-bit version of RetroArch. Once this is finished, I'm going to place it on my desktop for easy access. Okay, so now that we have RetroArch downloaded, we just need to extract it. I'm going to right-click here. I'm using WinRAR, but you can also use 7-Zip. It's going to extract it to its own folder. We're now finished extracting. I'm going to go ahead and open up the RetroArch folder, and inside of here we'll have the EXE, or the application. I'm going to go ahead and right-click and just create a shortcut. Place this on my desktop for easy access. So now we're going to start up RetroArch. You need to be online for all of this to work. It's going to start up in a windowed mode. If you press F on your keyboard, it'll go to full screen. I use an Xbox One controller for most of my emulation, and I have it plugged into this PC now. You can also use it wireless if your PC has Bluetooth built in. So at the very top, we have main menu, settings, favorites, histories, image, and so on and so on. We're going to be dealing with main menu right now. You need to be online for this to work. We're going to go to online updater, core updater, and we need to download the new Parallel Core. So we're going to go through here and find N64 or Nintendo 64. And we want to download the Nintendo 64 Parallel N64 Core. Press A on your controller or enter on your keyboard. We now have the core installed. We can back up by pressing B. And we're back at the main menu. Now we need to add our games. It's actually really simple to do. We're going to go down to Import Content, Scan Directory, and we're going to locate our N64 games. Like I mentioned, mine are located on my desktop. So I'll find it from here. They're in a folder called N64. We're going to choose this folder and scan this directory. Scan my games. If you have more, it may take longer. I only have about eight in here. So we're going to back all the way up to the main menu. Now we have a little section down here called Nintendo 64. These are my games. Let's go ahead and get some box art just to make it look a little better. We'll go back to main menu, online updater, and at the very bottom, on-demand thumbnail downloads. Turn this on. We'll go back to our N64 section, and once we choose a game, it'll automatically download that box art for us. So now we have box art for each of our games, and this will work with the whole collection if you've imported the whole N64 collection. So like I said, this works with OpenGL or Vulkan. Personally, I prefer using Vulkan, so I'm going to go back to Settings, Drivers, Video, and you can see it's set to GL. That's OpenGL. And from here, I'm going to choose Vulkan. You can stick with OpenGL if you'd like to, or you can test both of these. So now we'll be using the Vulkan back in. I'm going to back up one more time, and now it's time to start a game. We need to set this core up. I'm going to go with GoldenEye007. I'm going to run the game. I'm going to choose the parallel N64 core, and this only happens one time when you start a game, so it'll know you want that core. We'll click Run one more time, and the game's going to start up. 
So we now need to get back into our settings menu. You can press F1 on your keyboard, or you can press the Xbox button on your controller if you're using an Xbox One controller or a 360 controller. We're going to scroll down until we see options. And from here, there's a lot of settings to mess around with. It might be a little overwhelming, but we only have a few to mess with. GFX plugin needs to be set to parallel, and our RSP plugin needs to be set to parallel. And there's one more thing I like to change in here. We're going to go to overlay, and I'm going to set mine to AA only. You can experiment with these settings if you'd like to. We'll back up. We're going to go all the way up to close content. That way our changes take effect. And now we can rerun the game. And we are now set up with the parallel core. Everything should be functioning pretty well with this. It's a very accurate and fast emulator. So a lot of people might want to see their FPS listed on screen. We can always go back to the main menu, F1, or you can press the Xbox button on your controller. We're going to back up and head back to settings. From here, we're going to scroll down until we see on-screen display, on-screen notifications, and we're going to display frame rate. That way it's listed up in the top right hand corner. Main menu, quick menu is the game we're playing right now. We'll just resume gameplay. I'm going to skip right into it. Definitely very fast, very accurate. We're running uh, 007 Goldeneye at 60 FPS. And I always like having that frame rate on just so I can see how performance is going. Now with this new parallel update, um, it's not just fastness and accuracy. They've actually done a lot of bug fixes with different games that didn't work with the older version of Parallel. So I'll close this game down. And one that comes to mind right off the bat is Gauntlet Legends. We'll start this up. We're still going to be using that Parallel. Everything's pre-set up because we did it with the other game. And here it is. Gauntlet Legends is now working with the newly updated or newly rewritten Parallel Core and it plays amazingly. So yeah, you now have it set up and that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. I personally really like this core, but if it doesn't work out for you for some reason, you can always go back to Moopin 64 Plus Next really easily. You can delete this core completely or you can give it a try on different systems. I really like it. The accuracy is there, and it just works really, really well. If you have any questions or you want to see any other RetroArch tutorials or standalone emulators, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.